So China is creating new problems for the US. But back home, China's economy is losing its golden touch. 2023 was supposed to be the year for recovery. Instead, the Chinese economy has stalled. China's inflation remained close to zero in May. Manufacturing activity has shrunk, exports have reduced. In fact, there was a rebound in the housing market, but that too has subsided. To add insult to injury, foreign investors are now leaving in droves. They are dumping their Chinese investments and pulling out their money. In 2022, there was a massive sell-off. Investors sold $148 billion worth of Chinese bonds. They have lost faith in Chinese businesses too. Last month, $1.71 billion worth of shares were sold. Before that, in April, investors withdrew $659 million from the Chinese markets. They have clearly changed their minds. In the beginning of 2023, investors were bullish about China. Beijing had done away with zero COVID, the policy of mass testing and lockdowns. China's economy was opening up, so the foreign investors did some heavy buying. In the first five months of 2023, they invested a little over $25 billion. But the Chinese economy has underperformed. So by extension, the markets are under-delivering. That's the situation today. What about the future? Well, it isn't looking bright. Consider what a former IMF official said. Desmond Luckman says China is headed for a lost decade. Luckman has penned an editorial. He says, and let me quote, We may be at the end of the period when China, the world's second largest economy, served as the world economy's main growth engine and the main driver of international commodity prices. So Luckman is predicting an end to China's growth story. It is a fair argument to make. There are some compelling reasons. First, the structural problems within Chinese economy. A rapidly aging workforce, weak productivity, worsening inequality and the crisis within the property sector. There is an oversupply of real estate. More apartments, less buyers. Going by one claim, China has at least 65 million empty homes enough to house the entire population of France. There are more problems, like the crackdown on Chinese corporates. Xi Jinping is tightening the screws. He's pushing a concept called common prosperity. It is aimed at narrowing the wealth gap. Under this, technology companies, the education sector and entertainment firms have been hit by regulatory crackdowns. China has also placed limitations on its own companies. Their process to list companies overseas has become stricter. These changes have not gone down well with investors. They feel the Chinese market is unpredictable, so they are hesitant to invest. Geopolitical tensions too are making them more apprehensive. Things like US sanctions on exports to China and the growing calls to decouple. There's a big fall in investment from America. Private equity investments have reduced drastically. Last year, they fell by 76%. Basically, investors now feel the Chinese markets are more risky than before. That's an indictment of the Chinese state. And the Communist Party leadership, China's biggest asset this decade, was its economic growth. It enabled China's rise on the world stage. But it seems Beijing is losing that advantage. The foreign investors have lost trust in China. And this is a direct result of the policies of the Communist Party. Choosing a new NATO chief may sound difficult, but this is not the only problem NATO has right now. The Alliance has a new headache. Former German fighter pilots who could have shared NATO's tactics with China. Sounds alarming, right? Well, Germany sure is worried. The report first came out in German newspaper Der Spiegel. It says former German fighter pilots are training Chinese forces. Now, it is common for militaries to cooperate. They often share tactical and technical information. In fact, Germany has conducted military training programs with China before. But these are former German pilots. They are there on lucrative contracts. They are not bound by any rules or diktat. 
While serving in the army is a lifelong commitment, it is not so hard and fast right now. The reason for this is military contracting. Former officers now have a lot of options. They can take their skill sets elsewhere. But is that necessarily a good thing? Not really. There are fears that these pilots could have shared military secrets. Secrets like confidential operational tactics, practiced attack scenarios and even crucial information about NATO air operations. Now these are former Luftwaffe pilots. We are talking about Germany's aerial warfare. They learn crucial skills like suppression of enemy air defence and destruction of enemy air defence. Both of these are classic Luftwaffe forte. If they do pass this skill set to China, it could make the PLA a lethal force. It could help Beijing gain air superiority in any fight, especially in a fight against Taiwan. Germany too has the same fear. Now legally, there's nothing wrong with this. This sort of private work does not violate any laws. But there's a legal grey zone. Retired service members often have retroactive service obligations. This means they must report the work they are doing. The ministry then conducts a security check and the employment can be denied. But Germany wants to stop this practice altogether. The defence minister is calling on China to end it. Last week, Boris Pistorius met his Chinese counterpart. This was at the Shangri-La Dialogue. He asked him to stop this policy immediately. Now, Pistorius says China did not deny the practice of hiring former pilots, but played down the significance. Basically, Beijing doesn't think this is a big deal. And why would they? They are the ones benefiting from this arrangement. Now, this practice is not new. It has been going on for a decade now. It is also not limited to Germany. This is a NATO-wide issue. Last year, there were similar reports from UK. It mentioned 30 former pilots of the British Royal Air Force. They were apparently advising the PLA, teaching them NATO tactics and Western military doctrine. So clearly, Beijing has had a long history of doing this, using Western know-how to help its military. Essentially, what they do is offer lucrative contracts and in return, steal secrets of Western military practices. But why is West or the NATO not alarmed yet? Are they underestimating China's growing military power or are they consumed with a war at their borders? Either way, NATO needs to wake up to this problem. They need to safeguard their military doctrine. Germany seems to have realised this late. They are now looking at ways to stop this. UK too is mulling tightening its laws, but the alliance needs to act decisively. They must tackle this before it blows up. They must realise that prevention is better than cure. A new spy game has begun. The second Cold War is intensifying and US might have a new problem to deal with. After sending a spy balloon, China could build a spy base in Cuba. Yes, a dedicated facility in America's backyard. Disturbing reports have emerged. They say China and Cuba have struck a deal. Beijing will set up a snooping base on the island. In return, Havana is getting billions of dollars. That's the claim made by an American newspaper. This couldn't have happened at a worse time. The US and China are talking again. After a delay, America's top diplomat is finally getting a chance to travel to China. Blinken could go to Beijing as soon as next week. Will these revelations derail his trip again? Let's discuss. There's no official communication yet. The plans for the moment exist just on paper. But both countries have agreed in principle. Washington has reason to worry. So what is China's plan in Cuba? Now reports say it wants to set up an eavesdropping station here, about 160 kilometers away from Florida. This is Cuban territory. From here, China can snoop on key military bases inside America. Several important bases are in this region. There's one in Tampa, the US Central Command headquarters. This is the same command which led the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq. Then there is Fort Liberty in North Carolina, the largest US military base. All these bases will be targets for the Chinese base. What kind of intelligence can it pick up? 
signals intelligence. This includes emails, phone calls and satellite transmission. I know this sounds like an intelligence nightmare, but Washington is trying to play down the story. The Pentagon has dismissed these reports. Is there a new listening post in Cuba uh, that affects the United States? Based on the information that we have, that that is not accurate, uh, that, that we are not aware of China and Cuba uh, developing any type of spy station. Separately, I would say that the relationship that those two countries share is something that we continuously monitor. So the reports are inaccurate, according to Washington. But China is deepening its ties with Cuba. For America, that is a matter of concern. Havana too issued a denial. It called the claims unfounded. These are all fallacies with the perfidious intention of justifying an unprecedented tightening of the embargo, destabilization and aggression against Cuba and of deceiving the public in the United States and the world. So what was China's reaction? The Chinese embassy in Washington did not refute the story. They said they don't know anything about this, so they won't be able to comment. Earlier today, Beijing spoke out. They said the U.S. is spreading rumors. I'm not aware of the situation that you've mentioned. It's well known to everyone that spreading rumors and slander is a common U.S. tactic. The U.S. is spreading rumors. Slander is a common tactic. A lot of criticism, but no denial. And that says something. Experts say China is trying to turn the tables on the U.S. For a long time, the U.S. was uh, unilaterally capable of uh, spying on Chinese military exercises, activities. The Chinese could do only so much. And this facility shifts that. It is a shift indeed. The U.S. conducts routine spying operations. It sends surveillance flights over South China Sea. It deploys military assets in the Pacific. It equips allies with sophisticated intelligence gathering tools. So China is trying to match up. It is making bold moves. In recent years, China's espionage activities have intensified. Washington has accused Beijing of targeting the U.S. government with hackers, recruiting agents and for monitoring dissenters and critics inside America. A spy base in Cuba seems to be the next step. It is strategically located and near the United States. China and Cuba have close ties. They have been close since the end of the last Cold War. China is Cuba's largest trade partner. Chinese firms are deeply involved in multiple Cuban industries. Beijing also holds a lot of Cuba's foreign debt. A cash infusion by China will be welcome news. The Cuban economy needs it. It is suffering due to inflation and fuel shortages. There's a cash crunch too, but to get the Chinese money, Cuba will have to make compromises. It won't be unprecedented. Just look at the past. Cuba is an old rival of the United States. During the first Cold War, it was a hotbed of all spy games. Cuba had deep ties to the Soviet Union. The Soviets too had built a spy base in Cuba. This was in the mid-1960s. Where was this base? The Lourdes Island, just south of Havana. The purpose remained the same. The base was there to snoop on America. But the world witnessed a bigger crisis in 1962. This is when Moscow placed its nukes in Cuba. Yes, the Cuban Missile Crisis, one of the most scary periods in modern history. That time, the US and the Soviet Union came dangerously close to a nuclear confrontation. They managed to pull back from the brink. Now, the US and China are on the same collision course. Washington's relationship with Havana remains frosty. Successive presidents have failed to win over Cuba. There's a trade embargo. Cuba is in desperate need of a partner. The door is wide open for China. Time is running out for the US to change course. And with that, I bring you Vantage Shots, images that tell the story. If the pictures from New York were not apocalyptic enough, smoke from Canadian wildfires have now blanketed the US capital. Washington, D.C. is now choking on smog. Meanwhile, Ukrainians are using boats to cross the streets after the Kakovka Dam blast caused floods in parts of South Ukraine. 
and how many ducks are good for luck? Hong Kong says two giant inflatable double ducks set sail in Hong Kong as an artist believes they will bring good luck to the city. And finally, what makes June 9th significant? On this day in 1934, Donald Duck made his first movie appearance. The character featured in Walt Disney's The Wise Little Hen. Donald Duck is Disney's most popular character with his trademark shirt and bow tie. He even became the most published comic book character in the world besides superheroes. That's all I have for you today on Vantage. But do catch Flashback tomorrow at 8 p.m. IST. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great weekend. Palki Sharma will be back with Vantage on Monday. If you follow international news, you must have heard of sanctions. The US sanctions Russia, the UK sanctions China. Have you wondered what it's all about? More importantly, have you wondered why they never work? Well, sanctions have a very old and complicated history. Also, there's a reason why they never seem to work. World leaders know it, but they won't tell you. Tune into Flashback and find out. and Russia are dangerously close to an armed conflict. This year, 2023, New Delhi will be the capital of global diplomacy. For a country as diverse as ours, with 88% of the population illiterate, it was a very big deal to write a constitution, and that too, the world's largest. Meanwhile, if we may, here's a Republic Day gift from India for the BBC. A list of suggestions for the BBC for their upcoming documentaries. Number one, the Kohinoor and the colonial loot. Number two, an outdated monarchy and unhealthy obsession with the royals. Number three, racism in 2023. We're waiting.